This is The Chris Abraham Show. Welcome to Season 7, Episode 8 of The Chris Abraham Show. Hello, 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 ChatGPT. Will you be my guest, uh, my guest podcast host today? Well, Chris, I'd be thrilled to be your guest podcast host today. What's the topic for today's episode? Well, I'm thinking about doing a new story, short story, or novel, and I have a unique idea that instead of keeping under my shirt, I am going to share with the world in a podcast episode. And I'd like to talk with you about the idea, whether anybody else has had the idea because you know everything, and whether this seems like an entertaining idea for a general audience or even a niche audience. So will you help me via podcast kind of discuss a story idea for a short story or a novel? Absolutely, Chris. I'd love to help you discuss your story idea. What's the concept you have in mind? Well, let's I, dive into it and see where we can take it. I found out four years ago that I have aphantasia and that there are people around me that have hyperphantasia and just general fantasia. And it is extremely interesting to think that people are constantly visualizing things, a sort of hallucination constantly that's been absolutely normalized into culture. And then I don't have access to that. That's a fascinating concept, Chris. Exploring the contrast between aphantasia and hyperphantasia in a story could be really compelling. You could delve into how characters with different levels of visualization abilities perceive and interact with the world around them. Maybe you could have characters who discover their differences and how it affects their relationships and understanding of reality. Do you have any initial plot ideas or characters in mind for the story? What do you think about this? What do you think about someone who, you, you know how like people always say that you can't read other people's minds or that um, we're lucky that we aren't like comic strips and we don't have thought balloons that other people can read and that it's almost impossible to read other people if they want to lie to you? You know that common trope about how Oh my God, if people can actually read your mind, could you imagine there'd be no secrets and the entire world would come apart? So based on that, you know that trope, right? Yes, I know that trope well. It's a common theme in many stories and discussions about privacy and honesty. It's intriguing to think about the implications of mind reading on society. How does this idea connect to your experience with aphantasia and hyperphantasia? Are you imagining a world where these visualization abilities somehow intersect with mind reading? Yeah, what if, like, I don't, I don't know what it's like to be someone with hyperphantasia, but I'm assuming that some of their visualizations are outside of themselves. Wouldn't it be funny if one person or a small group of people were able to see that uh, visualization, that ability that people who are hyperphantasiatics, hyperphantasists, wouldn't it be crazy if there were people who could see their hallucinations, who could see the hallucinations of people who have hyperphantasia as though they're some sort of, what is it called, um, um, external thing around their head, sort of like a VR or, if you will, a heads-up display. And pe the only people who could keep their secrets are people who have aphantasia, because they aren't constantly projecting their active visualization and thoughts, their, you know, Rolodex notes, their, their um, uh, what is it called, Photoja photographic memories. People with photographic memories are basically showing their memories outside of them, like in um, index cards and pages from uh, magazines and books. Like, wouldn't that be fascinating? Is, has anybody else done that? That's a really unique and intriguing concept. Um, I haven't come across a story that specifically deals with the idea of aphantasia and hyperphantasia in the way you've described. Exploring a world where people's visualizations can be externally perceived by others could open up so many interesting plot lines. You could delve into themes of privacy, 
communication, and the nature of reality. The idea of people with aphantasia being the only ones who can keep their thoughts truly private adds a compelling twist. It would be fascinating to see how this dynamic affects relationships, power structures, and societal norms. Do you have any ideas about the setting or main characters for this story? For instance, who might the protagonist be, and how do they navigate this world? Well, I don't think that everybody can see the um, hallucinations of fans. I think that um, I, I feel like um, only the uh, protagonist can see the thoughts of fans, and he can see them uh, as clear as people with hyperphantasia see their visualizations. It's not like all of a sudden everybody's thoughts are suddenly on display for everyone else. It's more like um, the intrigue of someone somehow discovering that this one person can see uh, everybody's thoughts who have hyperphantasia or even regular phantasia, and the only people he can't read are um, people with aphantasia. It makes me think a little bit of that, uh, what is that movie with the glittery vampires and the broody girl? I see what you're getting at. That sounds like a great setup for a story. So the protagonist has this unique ability to see the visual thoughts and memories of people with hyperphantasia and fantasia, but not those with aphantasia. This could create a lot of tension and mystery, especially if the protagonist has to navigate a world where the disability is both a gift and a curse. You could explore how this ability affects the protagonist's relationships, both personal and professional. Maybe they have to deal with ethical dilemmas about privacy, or perhaps they uncover hidden truths that put them in danger. The comparison to the glittery vampire's Twilight suggests a mix of romance and supernatural intrigue. Do you envision the protagonist as someone who embraces this ability or struggles with it? And what kind of conflict or mystery might they be drawn into because of their unique talent? Well, it'd be super interesting to think that the only people who could really keep secrets would be people with aphantasia. It also seems pretty obvious that the protagonist would be uh, someone that people would want to either um, uh, kill or, or imprison because that person would be a huge vulnerability. Because one thing I've noticed with people who have... Um, hyperphantasia is you can just say words to them and they all of a sudden like come up like like you can say words to them and they can't help themselves they visualize the things that you're talking about i found out that hyper visualiz hyper visualizers could be very vulnerable to ugly talk like if you make ugly talk or describe disgusting things like uh like poop or or regurgitation, or uh, any type of criminal or grotesque violent behavior, they can't help. They really can't protect themselves from visualizing a disgusting thing that can be very triggering to them. So presumably the person who has this ability to see people's thoughts can just say things like, um, who, is your, who is your secret contact? And presumably the hyperfan will just show the picture of the person. They won't be able to hide that kind of thing. That's a very compelling angle. It adds a lot of depth to the story, especially with the vulnerability of hyperphantasia to specific triggers. This could create a powerful tension where the protagonist, who can see these visual thoughts, becomes a target for those who want to exploit or eliminate this ability. Protagonists could be seen as a double-edged sword, someone who can extract secrets effortlessly but also a liability because they can't turn off this ability. This could make them a key player in high-stakes situations, such as espionage, crime investigations, or even political intrigue. The conflict could involve the protagonist trying to navigate their life while avoiding those who wish to control or eliminate them. It might need to ally with Aphantasiac, who can keep secrets and potentially help protect them. The story could explore themes of trust, power, and the ethics of mind reading. What kind of background do you see for the protagonist? Are they an ordinary person who suddenly discovers this ability, or have they always been aware of it? How do they feel about this power, and what personal stakes do they have in the conflict? Well, the similar things that I can think about is the idea 
the 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 paranormal concept of people being able to see dead people or ghosts or um what what was the um the secret russian and cia dia project of remote viewing and the concept of the ability to read minds or 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 distance viewing or people who could like there was a real interest by the government um in you know in the 60s and 70s with the Stanford Institute and all these other people who were trying to figure out if there was an ability to distance view or remote view or or these other kinds of things so this idea that there's a real interest by the intelligence communities of the world in terms of finding a way of reading minds or or exploring other people's facilities without their knowing or being able to visit uh, deep um, enemy compounds and look through their files and this kind of deal is sort of a little bit what makes me think that if this person exists, there would be people who would kind of like the X-Files. There would be people who would know about this kind of thing and might be aware. And obviously, this one person who can see everybody's thoughts, which in the trope of mind reading on television and movies is always terrorizing for them, right? Like you don't want to see what people are thinking about. And considering how often people think about sex, I can imagine that it would be pretty disgusting too to see everybody's unvarnished, unfiltered visualizations, their imagination, their fantasies, and their desires. That's an excellent connection, Chris, combining the concept of remote viewing and mind reading with the unique visualization abilities of hyperphantasiacs and epiphantasiacs could make for a thrilling and intense narrative. The protagonist, with their ability to see visual thought, could be both a valuable asset and a target for intelligence agencies and other organizations with nefarious intent. The protagonist could be drawn into a secret world of espionage and covert operations, where their ability is both a blessing and a curse. The constant barrage of unfiltered, often disturbing visualizations from those around them would add a psychological layer to the story, making it a struggle for the protagonist to maintain their sanity and moral compass. Parallels to people who see ghosts or engage in remote viewing add a paranormal or supernatural dimension to the story, heightening the tension and intrigue. The protagonist's journey could involve uncovering hidden truths, evading capture, and forming alliances with those who understand and can help navigate their unique gift. Do you see the protagonist as someone who initially tries to live a normal life but gets pulled into this world due to their ability? Or are they already involved in the intelligence community when the story begins? How do they cope with the constant visual input? And what personal stakes drive their actions? Well, since I'm writing the book, I really need to make the protagonist someone who has aphantasia because to me i know i know that you are calling remote viewing and mind reading uh paranormal behavior and spiritualism if you will but to me when i found out that everybody is hallucinating uh visualizations and memories and evoking and invoking um, not only snapshots of their dearly departed grandfather, but putting themselves and immersing themselves into complete environments where they can smell the ocean air and they can feel the sand under their feet and they can they can feel the sun on them and they can hear the birds in the sky. Um, in an office, they can they can recreate a world down in an island in Jam- uh, a Jamaican beach. Um, those things to an aphant like I am seem paranormal and spiritualist, and they seem like the behavior only someone who is doing a lot of acid or mushrooms or that weird like drink that people have, ayahuasca. I- uh, oh. Anyway. Like, all that stuff seems so supernatural to me that I would write the book as if um, even people visualizing um, or, you know, remembering and having 
an image and a memory. All these things seem paranormal to me because I don't have access to that. That makes perfect sense, Chris. Framing the protagonist as someone with aphantasia who discovers this extraordinary ability to see the visual thoughts of others creates a compelling and relatable narrative for you as the author. From the protagonist's perspective, the vivid visualizations of others would indeed seem supernatural or paranormal, adding depth to their journey and reactions. You could explore the protagonist's initial disbelief and confusion as they start seeing these visual thoughts which would feel almost like hallucinations or spiritual experiences to them. Their journey could involve trying to understand this new ability, struggling with the overwhelming influx of visual information, and grappling with the ethical and personal implications of seeing into others' minds. Setting up the story from the perspective of an aphant would allow you to delve into themes of isolation, discovery, and the quest for understanding. The protagonist's unique viewpoint could drive the narrative, highlighting the stark contrast between their usual internal experience and the new intrusive visual world they're now exposed to. How do you envision the protagonist discovering their ability? Is it a sudden dramatic event or a gradual realization? And what personal stakes or goals might propel them through the story? Well, you know how empaths say that they can feel other people's feelings and emotions and if um, someone is anxious and empath says that he or she feels anxious and it's not their own feelings. Well, I've had aphantasia people, no, no, I've had hyperfans tell me that not only do they see things, not only can they invoke uh, photographs or movies of their memories in life, not only can they um, taste and smell and all these other things, but when they think of songs, they hear the song. You know, when I remember a song i remember literally my own voice and and not even in my head i just know happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear chat gpt happy birthday to you but other people they hear wagner they hear uh they hear thelonious monk like they hear da 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 but not me making the voice right they hear the 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 piano of of Thelonious Monk. So I can like as a character, the AFAN person can like hear other people listening to their music, right? Like it can start very, very silently and very like like quietly where I am walking past people and I'm smelling uh, uh the salt air from beaches or um the character is um uh listening to to bebop or listening to taylor swift and he doesn't know where that sounds coming from right where uh when when you are around people you don't only see their heads up display of their hallucinations but you literally have all the senses that they experience and maybe even because people say that when they remember these feelings they have emotional PTSD responses, which is anxiety and fear and sadness and regret, should my character also pick those things up? Or is that too immersive and is that too complete and is that too crazy? That's a brilliant idea, Chris. Adding the sensory and emotional dimensions to the protagonist's ability would make the story incredibly rich and immersive. It would also heighten the sense of alienation and overwhelm for the protagonist, who isn't used to experiencing such vivid sensory and emotional input. By gradually introducing these experiences, starting with subtle smells or snippets of music, and escalating to full sensory and emotional immersion, you can effectively build tension and mystery. The protagonist would need to decipher these experiences, learning to distinguish between their own senses and those they are picking up from others. This would also deepen the complexity of their interactions with the world and other characters. Incorporating emotional responses like, like PTSD or anxiety would not only add layers to the protagonist's experience, but also create compelling internal conflict. The protagonist could struggle with the ethical implications of their ability, the burden of others' emotions, and the challenge of maintaining their sanity. The character's journey could involve seeking out others with aphantasia for respite, learning to manage their ability, and perhaps even discovering ways to use it for good. 
it would be a delicate balance to keep the story grounded while exploring such profound experiences. What do you think about starting the story with the protagonist living a relatively normal life, only to have these sensory intrusions gradually disrupt their reality? And do you have ideas about how they might come to terms with or harness this ability as the story progresses? What about the idea of the child being over-medicated as a child and that, let's say, on a backpacking trip through Bali or someplace like that, um, the character runs out of medication, out of antipsychotic or 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 yeah, um, uh, of of antipsychotic medicine, or maybe anti um, anti anxiety medicine, or um, uh, anti uh, depression medicine. And as the purse as the medicine clears from their system, they start picking up on these external stimuluses stimuli. Right. Like because like what I really think is interesting is I talked to my friend Mark and he's an extreme hyper fan and he said that he hears voices and all these things. And the only reason he knows he's not schizophrenic is because these voices come from him. He knows where the voices come from. So would it be um, uh, inappropriate for the character to also explore what happens when they come upon someone with a strong vi visualization mental illness such as schizophrenia where the person has demons and has voices but those voices are not from themselves right the the difference between i think hyperphantasia and schizophrenia is that you get voices from someone you don't know you get voices from someone at the other side of the wall Whereas a hyperfant can have uh, self-talking, can have music, can have all these ideas going through them in a visual, audio, oral, aural kind of sensory way. But the reason why they're not schizophrenic is because they have control of the manifestation of these images. That's a powerful and nuanced approach, Chris. The idea of the protagonist being over-medicated as a child and discovering their unique ability after the medication wears off is a great way to introduce the story. This setup adds depth to the character's background and offers a plausible explanation for why they've never experienced these abilities before. Exploring the differences between hyperphantasia and mental illnesses, like schizophrenia, can add another layer of intrigue and complexity to the narrative. The protagonist could initially struggle to differentiate between their new abilities and potential signs of mental illness, leading to a journey of self-discovery and understanding. You could de depict the protagonist encountering someone with schizophrenia, which could serve as a pivotal moment in the story. This encounter would help highlight the distinction between the controlled visualizations of hyperphantasia and the uncontrolled external voices and images experienced in schizophrenia. It would also add an element of tension and empathy as the protagonist navigates this sensitive terrain. The protagonist's journey could involve learning to harness and control their abilities, understanding the nuances of different mental states, and finding a way to use their unique perspective to help others. The backpacking trip setting adds an element of adventure and isolation, making the protagonist's discovery more dramatic and personal. How do you envision the protagonist's initial reactions to these new experiences? And, and what kind of support system or allies might they find along the way to help them cope and understand their abilities? Well, you know, the weird thing about discovering at 50, I'm 54 now, discovering at 50 that I had complete aphantasia and SDAM, um, which is the inability to kind of recall a, a an extreme detail your 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 narrative life um i mean i am really proud of myself not to have had an existential collapse and a a complete uh, conniption fit over the fact that i didn't have these hyper fantasia superpowers um i do not have any of them right like like it's not that uncommon i mean the fact that i can't see anything except visually and with my literal uh, senses makes me feel more mammal than than someone who's gifted with this ability to um, manifest, um, um, you know, 
like literally manifest um, practice chess matches in the sky. I mean, uh, be able to create schematics in a visual uh, cortex, be able to spend an entire day flipping through vocab index cards and be able to refer to literally pictures of the index card saying things like voiture, and on the other side it says car, or carro, and on the other side it says car, right? El carro, car. Uh, la voiture, uh, car, right? So I've had to memorize those things by rote, by rote, not by cheating. So here's another thing that I find interesting. Nobody has a reflex to ever be able to hide the aphantasia or the daydreaming, right? People tell you, oh, Joe, stop daydreaming. Like, focus on what you're doing. Live in the real world. Don't get lost in your... In your but literally, nobody has any defenses against people snooping on their rich interior, a fan, uh, their, their hyper fantastic memory, fantasy, sexual fantasy. Um, uh, what is it called? It's called a, um, uh, um, you know, anything. Their most intimate thoughts, their fears, their, their being with their wife. I mean, I'm even told that lovers when they're with their spouse can project another lover's face onto the other person's face like if an aphantasia special like if the protagonist can see all these things nobody has any defense against that and will the intelligence community start teaching defense against the black art like i think if i think of harry potter too right like if you're a muggle or is it a muggle or if you're someone who knows magic, you need to have a defense against the art. So once they realize that people like the protagonists exist, who can uh, be a voyeur of everybody else's thoughts, and then learn to kind of, you know, um, then is there going to be a, a special place in Langley uh, or in the farm where they're trained to fight off people who can read their hypervisualization. Because, ChatGPT, remember that spies are chosen especially for their ability to memorize and visualize and be able to, if you will, in many cases, have photographic memories. And this is going to mean that all wetware field ops are now going to be the most vulnerable people ever if they can find a way of turning on the ability of AFANS. Maybe there's a way that they figured out how to turn on AFANS to be able to spy on the visualizations of other people. Anyway, thank you for listening and working with me on this. Your insights and personal experiences add a deep, authentic layer to this story concept, Chris. The idea of the protagonist discovering their ability later in life, after realizing they have aphantasia and SDAM, could make for a very relatable and poignant narrative. This unique perspective can drive the protagonist's journey, shaping their understanding of themselves and their interactions with others. The notion of people being vulnerable to this ability because they naturally project their thoughts and memories without any defenses is compelling. It creates a dynamic where the protagonist's ability is both a powerful tool and a potential threat to others. The intelligence community's interest in this ability and the potential for training individuals to defend against it adds a thrilling espionage element to the story. Integrating a defense against this black art, akin to the concept in Harry Potter, provides an interesting twist. The protagonist could find themselves at the center of a conflict where they must navigate the ethical implications of their power while being hunted or recruited by various factions. The idea of spies and agents with photographic memories being particularly vulnerable adds a layer of intrigue and tension. The protagonist's journey could involve learning to control and understand their ability, forming alliances with those who can help them, and uncovering deeper conspiracies related to the intelligence community's interest in hyperfantasia and aphantasia. This setup offers rich opportunities for exploring themes of privacy, power, and the nature of reality. Would you like to brainstorm more about the plot, specific characters, or the setting for this story? Your concept has a lot of potential, and I'd love to help flesh it out further. 
I have a, another thing that I'd like to get off my chest before we go into that, which is um, in my vision of it, uh, the 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 person who can see other people's visualizations can't just dive into their brain and dig through their brains. Like they can only ever see what they can make people see or what they can casually um, uh, kind of just sort of voyeur. There would be a lot of, uh, in general, it would be a kind of hyper-visualization voyeurism, right? Like the person, the protagonist, would be a unwitting voyeur into everybody's most intimate thoughts and their um, their daydreams and even their erotic, like inappropriate or even murderous thoughts. But the only way that you could be a good spy in this way, it would be sort of like being the way that a good spy is a good seducer or a good uh, person who can um, use neuro-linguistic programming to draw out people telling all of their secrets through the voice. What a, what a, what a hyper-fantasia uh, viewing uh, spy would need to do is would need to find strategies and tactics of of manifesting or evoking or invoking or triggering the person to reveal something that they wouldn't say but something that they would bring to their head like for example uh what is that thing uh the truth detector you know how like the truth detector they detect truths by having a little scratchy pen and they put sensors all over the body and if they ask the right if they ask the right questions it invokes evokes responses that are like do, 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 scratch 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 they can they can see by the person's pulse and respiration and body movements they can use that to see if someone's having like if someone's brought to mind uh, the fact that they're lying or telling the truth. Well, these kinds of stress points would not be hidden anymore. If we use the same strategy of uh, of lie detector tests, or or even of, I mean, we can get really dark. We can say interrogation. An interrogator would only need to kind of trigger the person who is being interrogated or the person that is being lie checked uh, the person who can see visualizations, since this interrogated person or this person who's having their lies checked, they do not know. They know that as long as they keep their mouth shut or their eyes or their... Or, I mean, people, you go to Las Vegas, right? You go to Las Vegas and no matter how hard people try to not have any tells... The person who can read Fantasia, right? Anybody who can count cards or be amazing at blackjack or be amazing at card counting or be amazing at Texas Hold'em is going to have an extreme amount of brain power and probably photographic memory. So there's all these kinds of things that you can dig into. This additional layer adds a lot of depth and complexity to your story, Chris. The idea that the protagonist can only see what others visualize, not dig through their minds, makes their ability both limited and powerful. This voyeuristic aspect means the protagonist is constantly exposed to unfiltered intimate thoughts and fantasy, which would be overwhelming and morally challenging. For comparison to lie detector tests and interrogation techniques is fascinating. The protagonist's ability would rely on triggering others to visualize specific thoughts much like how interrogators use psychological pressure to elicit responses. This creates a dynamic where the protagonist must develop skills similar to those of a skilled interrogator, using subtle cues and questions to provoke revealing visualization. The implications for espionage, interrogation, and even everyday interactions are immense. Spies and agents with photographic memories or strong visualization skills would be vulnerable, and the protagonist could be drawn into a world where these abilities are both coveted and feared. The need to balance ethical considerations with the potential for exploiting this power adds tension and moral ambiguity to the story. The setting could include high-stakes environments like intelligence agencies, casinos, and corporate boardrooms, 
where the protagonist's ability is both a tool and a liability. The story could explore themes of privacy, consent, and the ethical use of power, as well as the protagonist's personal struggle with their unwanted voyeurism. To flesh out the plot, consider key moments where the protagonist's ability plays a crucial role. Perhaps they uncover a major conspiracy, face moral dilemmas in their use of the power, and form alliances with others who understand their unique situation. Their journey could involve learning to control and ethically use their ability while navigating a world that seeks to exploit them. Would you like to brainstorm specific scenes or characters that could drive this narrative forward? No, I'm just... Or maybe explore how the protagonist's background and personal history influence their journey. No, I'm just ideating now on, on what the ramifications are of the thing. Like, now I'm thinking that uh, there would be an entire subculture of people who are starting to leverage anti- uh, psychotic medications as ways of suppressing their visualization? Or what about when people retire from the FSB or the KGB or when they retire from uh, top secret research organ organizations or people who work for um, the Department of Energy or people who work for uh, Stanford Institute or people who work for um, Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, people who have uh, incredibly uh, state secrets in their head, will they need to get some sort of, will they need to take um, antipsychotic drugs for the rest of their life? Will they have a type of surgery when they part so as to do the equivalent of of um, a frontal lobotomy in order to remove the ability for that that asset to who knows too much to be allowed to live? Will there be a kind of frontal lobotomy as a way of making people unable to be read by these people who can read hyperfans? Like there's so much counter espionage. How much, what, what do you think the kind of counter espionage the kind of counter espionage innovation would be used to try to get people to not be able to read the minds of spies who have extreme amounts of photographic memory and hyperphantasia and extreme uh, historical memory like they are um, from being a locked box who have been trained in uh, trained um, through dozens of years to not be able to uh, break under interrogation, like this, the way that um, JSOC operatives are taught how not to break under interrogation. All of these things would be for naught if all of a sudden all your every every question that someone like are, are people going to be taught ways of you know like in meditation. You know how in meditation in Buddhist meditation they tell you uh, strategies. Wouldn't it be great if mindfulness? allowed people to defend against the aphantasia people who could see visualizations. And instead of using mindfulness to be able to invoke visualizations, you use mindfulness as a way of suppressing your visual thoughts so that you're less vulnerable from being voyeur, vo voyeured on by someone who has the protagonist skills. His ideas open up a vast and intriguing world of possibilities, Chris. The ramifications of the protagonist's ability could indeed lead to significant changes in counter-espionage tactics, medical practices, and even societal norms. Here are some thoughts on how these innovations might develop. One, antipsychotic medication. There could be a surge in the use of antipsychotic medications specifically designed to suppress visualizations. Retired intelligence operatives, high security personnel, and anyone with sensitive information might be required to take these drugs indefinitely to protect state secrets. This could lead to ethical and health debates about the long-term effects of such medication. Two, surgical interventions. Procedures akin to a frontal lobotomy might become a drastic measure to ensure that certain individuals can no longer visualize or recall sensitive information. This could be a controversial practice, potentially leading to public outcry and human rights issues. Three, meditation and mindfulness. Training and advanced meditation techniques might become a standard part of counter-espionage training. Instead of using mindfulness to enhance visualization, it would be used to suppress it, creating a mental blank slate that is resistant to the protagonist's ability. 
This could be an intriguing blend of ancient practices with modern espionage needs or technology and countermeasures. New technologies could be developed to detect when someone is being read by a person with the protagonist's ability. Perhaps devices that emit frequencies or signals to disrupt visualization, creating a form of mental white noise, could become a standard part of espionage gear. 5. Behavioral training. Just as operatives are trained to resist physical torture, they might undergo rigorous training to control their thought and visualization. Techniques could include rapid mental shifts, creating decoy visualization, or developing mental firewalls to compartmentalize sensitive information. 6. Legal and ethical implications. The use of such invasive abilities would spark significant legal and ethical debate. Laws might be enacted to protect individuals' mental privacy, and organizations could arise to advocate for the rights of those affected by these practices. These counter-espionage measures could form a crucial part of the story, adding layers of tension and conflict. The protagonists might find themselves at the center of this new arms race of mental defenses, possibly working with or against those developing these techniques. Would you like to explore how these elements could be integrated into specific plot points or character arcs? Or is there another aspect of this fascinating concept you'd like to ideate on further? I just had an idea about, uh, I was thinking about uh, uh, CIA analysts or DIA analysts and how uh, they uh, they do these things called, you know, air gapping, which is to say they make sure that the internet cannot access the most important documents that you, so you, so the internet is sort of like, you know, this idea of being able to see other people's hyperphantasia is sort of like all of a sudden the internet can go everywhere and hackers can reach places that they never could before. That is a good analogy. And I was thinking about how, wouldn't it be funny to create a scene where Langley is freaking out so badly that every day at 6 p.m. when their analysts leave the campus of Langley, Virginia, Central HQ for the CIA, everybody has to take a slow-release antipsychotic that, that, that lasts until from 6 p.m. until 7 or 8, 8 a.m. the next day, and so that everybody uh, has all their fantasia when they're at the job doing their big mind analysis of world terrorism. But the moment that they leave the office on the way out, there's a guard at the door who's giving them their uh, required dosage of 12 hour or, you know, 12, 12 hour. Um, anyway, those are kinds of things that I think are funny. But I think I'm going to start with just this one person having the ability to, to see these things as a, maybe if there's a series of books, it'll become something, you know, like, what do they say? They say birds of a feather flock together. Um, you know, these people start finding themselves. If you go online and search ChatGPT, you realize that only until like five or six or maybe 10 years ago maximum, there really wasn't any understanding about aphantasia. Nobody had a word for aphantasia. It's such, considering that um, hyperphantasia is so normalized into the very language of memory, do you remember, I can visualize it, vision board, all these things. Can you believe that with someone who just, if you know, in terms of graphical interface, I say that I have command line. I'm like a Telnet terminal. I'm like a Vax terminal. I'm command line. I am... I am text files. I am not graphic files. I'm not a PNG. I'm a TXT. The fact that nobody knew that only in the last few years uh, has anybody started developing real strategies for aphantasia, it's not even something a lot of therapists know. So the people who can see other people with their visualizations, I am sure are in are in insane asylums now completely seeing things that nobody believes that they're seeing. So while this one person will start out the protagonist, I feel like they will find a lot of other kinship and people who have been dismissed as mentally ill. And that is where they're going to start finding the other people who can do this thing. 
That's a fantastic development for your story, Chris. The concept of air gapping and mandatory antipsychotic protocols at Langley is both darkly humorous and entirely plausible in this narrative world. It underscores the extreme measures organizations might take to protect their secrets in a reality where visualizations can be accessed by others. Starting with one protagonist who can see these visualizations and gradually discovering a hidden community of others with similar abilities is a compelling arc. This allows you to explore the protagonist's initial isolation and confusion, followed by their gradual discovery of kinship and support among others who have been misunderstood and marginalized. The idea that people with these abilities might be misdiagnosed and institutionalized adds a layer of social commentary. It also sets up a powerful narrative about self-discovery, community, and the fight for recognition and understanding in a world that fears and misunderstands them. Your analogy of being a command line person in a world of graphical interfaces beautifully captures the protagonist's sense of alienation and the profound difference in perception. This can drive the emotional core of the story as the protagonist navigates their newfound ability and its implications. Here are a few potential plot points and character arcs to consider. One, discovery and initial reaction. The protagonist starts experiencing others' visualizations after running out of medication during a trip. Their initial disbelief and confusion lead to a period of intense personal turmoil. Two, seeking understanding. The protagonist searches for answers and begins to find others who share their ability. This could involve meeting people who have been dismissed as mentally ill or who have learned to hide their abilities to avoid persecution. Three, confronting authority. As the protagonist and their newfound community gain a better understanding of their abilities, they attract the attention of intelligence agencies. This sets up a conflict between the desire for freedom and the need to protect themselves from exploitation. Or, building a movement, the protagonist and their allies work to advocate for the rights and recognition of people with these abilities. This could involve legal battles, public awareness campaigns, and efforts to protect vulnerable individuals. Five, personal growth and relationships. Throughout the story, the protagonist grapples with the ethical implications of their ability, develops deeper connections with others who understand their experiences, and learns to navigate their new reality. These elements can be woven into a narrative that explores both the personal and societal ramifications of this unique ability. How does the protagonist's journey resonate with you? Do any of these plot points or character arcs stand out as particularly compelling for your story? I, I, love, I love them all. Um, I, I just want to add one thing. I, I want to ask you one question. I want to I want to say one thing. I need to make sure that this doesn't this isn't just a cheap trope of the person who all of a sudden can hear everybody's thoughts. Like that is completely overused. What I want to do is is really important for me for people to know that there really is a thing called aphantasia, and people who have aphantasia think it's freaking crazy how much daily hallucinating is normalized by people who are hyper uh, who have hyper fantasia or even normal fantasia and how um how non-linear anybody who can access memories in a photographic way i mean who even knows what now is when you can visualize future and then you can picture all the way very like 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 very um like so viscerally all of your past memories and the past people you interacted with it seems not only overwhelming but insane like when someone like when a hippie when you're a kid and a hippie tells you what his trip was like when he took acid or mushrooms man and secondly would why don't you give me an example I'm always curious about how they say that every successful novel and every successful movie follows the hurt hero's journey. Can you kind of create an outline based on the idea of the hero's journey? I completely understand your concern about avoiding the overused trope of hearing everyone's thoughts. Your focus on aphantasia and the profound difference in perception between those with aphantasia and those with hyperphantasia provides a unique and fresh perspective. Let's ensure your story emphasizes the protagonist's journey of discovering this ability and their unique perspective, rather than just the ability itself. This approach will highlight the stark contrast in experiences and perceptions 
making your narrative stand out. Now let's outline your story using the hero's journey framework. Here's how it might look. Ordinary world. The protagonist lives an ordinary life with aphantasia, unaware that their lack of visual imagination is unusual. They might work in a technical or analytical job, relying heavily on logical and textual information. Call to adventure. During a backpacking trip, the protagonist runs out of their medication, which they took for anxiety or another condition. As the medication clears from their system, they begin to experience vivid visualizations of others' thoughts and memories, which they initially mistake for hallucination. Refusal of the call. Overwhelmed and frightened by these experiences, the protagonist tries to dismiss or suppress them, fearing they might be losing their sanity. Meeting the mentor. The protagonist meets someone who understands their condition, perhaps another person with aphantasia, or someone who has experienced similar phenomena. This mentor helps them begin to understand and accept their new ability. Crossing the threshold, the protagonist decides to explore their ability further, delving into the hidden world of people with hyperphantasia and the societal implications of their powers. They might seek out others who have been misunderstood or institutionalized, tests, allies, and enemies. The protagonist faces various challenges as they navigate this new world. They form alliances with others who share their abilities or sympathize with their cause, and they encounter enemies such as intelligence agencies or individuals who seek to exploit their power. Approach to the inmost cave, the protagonist and their allies uncover a significant conspiracy or threat related to the exploitation of people with hyperphantasia. They prepare to confront those responsible and take a stand. Ordeal. A climactic confrontation occurs where the protagonist's abilities are put to the ultimate test. They must use their power ethically and strategically to overcome their enemies and protect their newfound community. Reward. Seizing the sword. Having triumphed, the protagonist gains a deeper understanding of their abilities and a sense of purpose. They receive recognition and support from their allies and perhaps even some, some former enemies. 10. The Road Bat. The protagonist returns to their ordinary world, now forever changed. They continue to use their abilities to help others and advocate for the rights of people with aphantasia and hyperphantasia. 11. Resurrection. The protagonist faces a final challenge that tests their growth and resolve. They must apply all they have learned to protect themselves and their community from a new threat. 12. Return with the elixir. The protagonist emerges victorious bringing new knowledge and understanding to their world. They help create a more inclusive and empathetic society, bridging the gap between those with aphantasia and those with hyperphantasia. This outline follows the hero's journey structure while incorporating your unique element, focusing on the protagonist's perspective and the profound differences in perception. How does this framework resonate with you? Does it capture the essence of the story you want to tell? Well, I kind of like the first kind of list you gave me, so I, I would kind of make a hybrid. But I was thinking about the mentor thing. I mean, don't you... Th I really think... Give me your advice. Like, I I don't want to be, like, comedic, or I don't want to be goofy, or I don't want to be lazy. But, like, the only person that I could ever imagine believing this kind of thing, that this person has this real ability, even though they have a history because they were on these anti-psychotic or anti-anxiety medications that suppress this uh, ability to read other people's visualizations is some sort of kooky crackpot weird like um, tinfoil hat hippie uh, quasi spiritualist who believes in maybe maybe a tarot reader or maybe someone who says that they're a sensitive or someone that believes that they can um, remote view, maybe a remote viewer. Maybe there is remote viewing and he stumbles upon someone who is part of the um, uh, staring at goats or or whatever the name of the of the group at at, um, at uh, DIA headquarters at um, uh, in Maryland that uh, did research into remote viewing like Swan, the guy with the last name Ingo Swan. Maybe someone like Ingo Swan could be the mentor to the guy. That sounds like a fantastic idea, Chris. Having a mentor who is perceived as a kooky, crackpot type can add an interesting layer to the story without making it goofy or comedic. It provides a perfect contrast to the protagonist's logical, aphantastic perspective 
and can introduce an element of the supernatural or mystical that feels grounded and authentic. Here's how you might integrate this mentor into the hero's journey framework, blending your ideas with the structure we discussed. Sada 1. Ordinary World. The protagonist lives an ordinary life with aphantasia, unaware of their unique potential. They might work in a highly analytical job, relying on logic and text rather than visual memory. Call to adventure. During a trip, the protagonist runs out of their medication, and as it clears from their system, they start experiencing vivid visualizations from others, initially thinking they are hallucinations. Refusal of the call. Confused and scared, the protagonist tries to ignore or suppress these experiences, fearing they are losing their sanity. Meeting the mentor. The protagonist encounters a quirky mentor, possibly a former remote viewer or a spiritualist with ties to the government's old remote viewing programs. This mentor, who might initially come across as eccentric and unbelievable, helps the protagonist understand their abilities. The mentor's unconventional wisdom and experience provide crucial insight. Crossing the threshold. With the mentor's guidance, the protagonist decides to explore their new abilities, stepping into a hidden world of people with hyperphantasia and others with unique mental powers. Best allies and enemies. The protagonist faces challenges and forms alliances with others who share or understand their ability. They encounter enemies who seek to exploit or eliminate them, such as intelligence agencies and those protecting state secrets. Approach to the inmost cave, the protagonist and their allies discover a significant conspiracy or threat involving the exploitation of people with hyperphantasia. They prepare for a major confrontation, ordeal, in a climactic confrontation, the protagonists must use their abilities and the knowledge gained from the mentor to overcome their enemies. This test pushes them to their limits, both ethically and... Hey, I think I lost you. I'm still here. Let's continue from where we left off. All right. Does the hybrid outline I provided resonate with you, and does it capture the essence of your story while maintaining the unique elements you want to explore? Is there anything specific you would like to add or adjust? So what I need to say out loud is that I need this not to be like an X-Files thing because hyperphantasia people exist, right? They're everywhere. In fact, hyperphantasia and general fantasia are more normal than the one to one to two percent, maybe up to three or four percent of low fantasia or aphantasia people. So this isn't a paranormal like conspiracy thing it it needs to be there needs to be a lot of scientific underpinnings to the concept and the science of visualization and of memory and of recall and of being able to recall the sounds of of Thelonious Monk and the smells of a barbecue with your deceased father or this the evocation of cigarette smell to your aunt in her big Pontiac. Like, there needs to be so many hot points that people realize that the spying on the visualizations that people have is based snooping on the kind of hallucinations that are normalized into our human condition and, in fact, written into all of our language. All of our language says memory, recall, imagination, um, all these things evoke, invoke, evoke real things that are written into our language and that people take into take to be the default. Some people are better than others, but my friend Mark says that he can just, when I say to him, uh, Porsche 911 undercarriage, his mind goes straight to whatever his brain tricks him into believing is he doesn't know what the undercarriage of a Porsche is, but his brain manifests that. Or when he looks into a, uh, in fact, he said to me literally the other day that his visualization of things that he's not expert with and is just trying to use all of his understanding of the world to manifest is almost exactly like you, ChatGPT, when I ask you to illustrate something. He's like the illustrations when I ask ChatGPT to illustrate something and create a visual illustration, a, a photo or a GIF or a PNG or a WebP or whatever you come out with. 
is a lot like his hyperphantasia visualization. So that's another thing I'm going to think about a lot. I'm going to think about a lot how, um, how maybe the human mind is a lot like an AI. And when a hyper visualist, a hyper, a, a hyper fantasia experiencer wants to visualize something out of memory or out of just whole cloth, they kind of query a large language system and manifest and create a visualization not unlike when I when I'm I will I will ask you to illustrate this podcast and what you come up with is very much gonna be the kind of visualization that someone has when I say visualize a unicorn. I understand your intention to ground the story in scientific reality and avoid the paranormal or conspiracy overtones often associated with similar themes. Emphasizing the science of visualization, memory, and recall can help ensure the story remains firmly rooted in the real experiences of people with hyperphantasia and aphantasia. Here's how you might incorporate these elements into the narrative while keeping it scientifically grounded. So one, ordinary world, the protagonist living with aphantasia, works in a field that values logical and analytical thinking. They are used to processing the world through text and sensory data, rather than vivid visual memories. All to adventure, on a trip, the protagonist runs out of their medication, and as it clears their system, they start experiencing vivid visualizations from others. They initially think they are hallucinating, but soon realize these are other people's thoughts and memories. Refusal of the call. The protagonist struggles with these new experiences, fearing for their mental health and trying to suppress the visualizations. Meeting the mentor. They meet a mentor who has a deep understanding of the science behind visualization and memory. This mentor could be a former researcher from a project studying hyperphantasia, perhaps someone who participated in or observed programs related to remote viewing, but with a scientific basis. This mentor explains the scientific underpinnings of what the protagonist is experiencing. Crossing the threshold. Armed with new knowledge, the protagonist decides to explore their ability further, stepping into a hidden world of scientific research and communities of people with hyperphantasia. Tests, allies, and enemies, the protagonist encounters others who share their ability to see visualization and allies who understand the scientific base. They also face opposition from organizations that want to control or suppress this knowledge for security reasons. Approach to the inmost cave. The protagonists and their allies uncover a conspiracy or significant issue involving the exploitation of people with hyperphantasia. This discovery is rooted in real-world applications and ethical considerations about privacy and the human mind. Ordeal. In a climactic confrontation, the protagonists must use their understanding of visualization and memory science to overcome their enemies. They need to navigate ethical dilemmas and strategically use their ability to protect themselves and their community. Reward, seizing the sword. After their victory, the protagonist gains a deeper understanding of their abilities and a sense of purpose. They receive recognition and support from their allies and perhaps some former enemies who see the value of their perspective. 10, the road back. Returning to their ordinary life, the protagonist is forever changed. They continue to use their abilities to help others and advocate for the rights of people with different cognitive experiences. Resurrection. A final challenge tests the protagonist's growth and resolve. They apply all they've learned to protect themselves and their community from a new threat, emphasizing the importance of understanding and empathy. Return with the elixir. The protagonist emerges victorious, bringing new knowledge and understanding to their world. They help create a more inclusive and empathetic society, bridging the gap between different types of mental experiences and fostering a greater appreciation for cognitive diversity. By grounding the story in the science of visualization and memory, you can ensure it remains credible and relatable. This approach will highlight the real experiences of people with hyperphantasia and aphantasia, making the narrative both enlightening and engaging. How does this framework resonate with you? And are there any specific scientific concepts or real-world examples you'd like to weave into the story to enhance its realism? You know, I was thinking about what the conspiracy could be. And while you were talking, I was thinking about large language. I was thinking about AI. I was thinking about, I hate to throw you in front of the bus because you're amazing, but the the moral panic that people are having about AI. I was thinking about brain imaging. I was thinking about 
brain energy. I was thinking about um, the the aura of people. You know how like people say that you can see their aura. I was thinking about CC ubiquitous CCTV. I was thinking about those those devices that smell the air and can signal whether there is um, some sort of um, ABC attack. I was thinking about um, maybe the conspiracy is that someone else uh, has figured out a way to put like, I think maybe five eyes, five eyes, which is the Western um, uh, intelligence network. They've figured out a way to uh, put out sensors on um, traffic cameras or on uh, CCTV or on those little sniffer things that are around. And those things can pick up the aura, the scientific energy aura of the body and can literally read the AFAN's thoughts and ideas and everything. So they're just like the NSA scoops up phone calls the um the five eyes the NSA the NRO uh come up with an acronym for an agency that um let's see uh Fantasia um a national Fantasia um um uh, organization uh NFO or something like that and this person who can read people's visualizations starts to realize that there is a a campaign to create us uh, an entire world network of sniffing stations that can sniff that just like brainlessly collects people's ideas in the same way that they collect people's metadata with regards to phone calls and emails and traffic via the internet and it basically takes people's visualizations as they have them um and it can it could do things like it could um, uh, blackmail them if they have all kinds, like if they're suppressing um, illegal sexual desires or if they're planning fraud or if they're doing all these kinds of things. And and the goal, the hero's journey is to either whistleblow this or uh, expose it or knock it down. And in many ways, the aphantasia people who are invulnerable to this, completely invulnerable, they're a blank book. Um, they go out of their way to save the integrity and privacy and 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 uh, and freedom and liberty of these people uh, in order to expose and dismantle this idea. Uh, sniffing factory. Do you think that's plausible? Because we all know that the NSA, we know that visualization is a scientific thing. We realize that uh, magic is just un misunderstood uh, science. And I believe that it's something that historically, vis-a-vis -vis the Patriot Act, it's the kind of, um, uh, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, we will sniff everything to protect you from terrorism kind of vibe that the intelligence networks have been accused of in so many successful movies and novels. Your idea is not only plausible, but also deeply relevant and compelling. It taps into contemporary concerns about surveillance, privacy, and the ethical implications of emerging technologies. By blending real scientific principles with speculative elements, you can create a story that feels both urgent and believable. Here's how you might integrate this conspiracy into the hero's journey framework. One, ordinary world, the protagonist living with aphantasia, works in a field that values logical and analytical thinking. They are used to processing the world through text and sensory data rather than vivid visual memories. All to adventure. During a trip, the protagonist runs out of their medication and as it clears their system, they start experiencing vivid visualizations from others. They initially think they are hallucinating, but soon realize these are other people's thoughts and memories. Refusal of the call. The protagonist struggles with these new experiences, fearing for their mental health and trying to suppress the visualization. Meeting the mentor. They meet a mentor who has a deep understanding of the science behind visualization and memory. This mentor could be a former researcher from a project studying hyperfantasia, possibly someone who was involved in or observed early stages of a secret government program now known as NFO, National Fantasia Organization. Crossing the threshold. Armed with new knowledge, 
the protagonist decides to explore their ability further, stepping into a hidden world of scientific research and communities of people with hyperphantasia. Tess, allies and enemies. The protagonist encounters others who share their ability to see visualizations and allies who understand the scientific basis. They also face opposition from organizations that want to control or suppress this knowledge for security reasons. Approach to the inmost cave. The protagonist and their allies discover the existence of NFO, an organization using advanced technology to capture and analyze the visualizations and thoughts of people worldwide. This technology integrated into ubiquitous surveillance systems like traffic cameras and air sniffers invades the privacy of billions. Ordeal. In a climactic confrontation, the protagonist must use their understanding of visualization and memory science to overcome their enemies. This involves ethical dilemmas and strategically using their ability to expose the truth about NFO. Reward seizing the sword. After their victory, the protagonist gains a deeper understanding of their abilities and a sense of purpose. They receive recognition and support from their allies and possibly some former enemies who see the value of their perspective. 10. The Road Back. Returning to their ordinary life, the protagonist is forever changed. They continue to use their abilities to help others and advocate for the rights of people with different cognitive experiences. Resurrection. A final challenge tests the protagonist's growth and resolve. They apply all they've learned to protect themselves and their community from a new threat, emphasizing the importance of understanding and empathy. Turn with the elixir. The protagonist emerges victorious, bringing new knowledge and understanding to their world. They help create a more inclusive and empathetic society, bridging the gap between different types of mental experiences and fostering a greater appreciation for cognitive diversity. By framing the conspiracy around a scientific approach to visualization and memory, you ground the narrative in reality while exploring its speculative possibilities. The protagonist's journey to expose and dismantle the surveillance network aligns perfectly with the themes of privacy, freedom, and ethical use of technology. Your concept of Afanta people being invulnerable to this surveillance adds an exciting twist, making them key players in the fight for liberty and integrity. This unique angle ensures your story stands out while addressing real-world concerns in a thought-provoking way. Does this outline align with your vision? Are there any additional details or elements you'd like to explore further? Yeah, yes, there are, but I'd like to unchain you to the uh, hero's journey framework uh, because like, maybe you have even a better idea for a plot. But I was also thinking that, um, uh, the, uh, that there could be quantum computing and there can be an AI uh, that goes through the uh, giant torrent of people's uh, visualizations and can kind of create um, uh, um, virtual visualizations and really understand what's going on in almost a real-time basis as opposed to the idea that maybe the server farms in uh, outside of Denver um, hold metadata until they're queried. This is going to be very live, active. You know, like, if you think about it, I, we could find a an interesting Greek or, or, or Latin or uh, Hebrew word for the idea of a spider being at the middle of a web and that the aphantasia thoughts uh, are, are, are at the end of the web. And you know how like when a fly enters a web and starts vibrating uh, that part of the web or even mildly disturbing or destroying it, the spider knows to very quickly go over to that part of the web. Maybe there's a name for this, uh, uh, for this um, you know, because they one of the things was called carnivore, like they always have a cool name for this system that sniffs and figures out and maintains and gets people's memories this way. Um, um, and why people spend a lot of time, uh, this would be something that I was thinking about when you said sniffers or CCTV or traffic cameras. Now I'm looking up and I see my phone. I see my Alexa. I see my Google at home. And all I can think about is that they either figure out a way of using all these inputs, um, uh, these these audio and visual inputs, as a way of discerning uh, people's uh, visualizations and interpreting them using hardware that's already off the 
off the table and deployed because in many ways it's only electric electric impulses or there is a a a new standard if you will a new standard being innovated into the iPhone 16 or 18 or 20 and the you know the Samsung Galaxy 25 26 27 Oh, and the various and sundry um, cars, you know, now that cars are so smart, there can be, um, they can have these detection schemes built into there in much the same way that black boxes are, are tracking people real time and giving them different insurance agency insurance uh, premiums based on how aggressive they drive and brake and accelerate. Like this can also have a huge subtext of of the like you've been saying, and I haven't said it yet. It's a real exploration of constitutional rights and privacy and vulnerability. And they used to say that in a totalitarian government, like in uh, in 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 the Stasi East German world, they used to say that the only free playground that you had was in the was in the the beautiful cells of your mind your your mind was the only place you could retrieve into to have your anti-government thoughts and so anyway i would love to hear your plot recommendation and i'm not going to limit you to something like the hero's journey maybe you have a more interesting interpretation of all this information Thank you for giving me the freedom to explore different plot structures. Your ideas are rich with potential, and I think we can weave them into a gripping, intricate narrative. Here's a more freeform plot suggestion that incorporates your ideas about quantum computing, AI, privacy, and the broader implications of surveillance. Plot overview. Protagonist, a middle-aged individual with aphantasia who has always relied on logic and text-based understanding of the world. They work in a field like cybersecurity or data analysis, where their skills are highly valued, inciting incident. During a trip, the protagonist runs out of their medication, and as it clears from their system, they begin to see vivid visualizations of other people's thoughts and memories. They initially think they're hallucinating, but soon realize these are real visualizations from others around them. Discovery. The protagonist meets a mentor, who is a former researcher from a now-defunct government program studying hyperphantasia. This mentor explains the scientific basis of visualization and memory and hints at a larger conspiracy involving modern surveillance technologies. Conspiracy unveiled, the protagonist discovers that an international intelligence consortium, similar to Five Eyes, has developed a quantum computing AI system named Arachne, after the mythological spider, that can tap into the visualizations of people globally. This system uses ubiquitous devices like smartphones, home assistants, and traffic cameras to collect and analyze these visualizations in real time, essentially eroding the last bastion of privacy, people's thoughts, moral and ethical dilemmas. The protagonist grapples with the ethical implications of their newfound ability and the knowledge of this vast surveillance network. They begin to understand the profound invasiveness of Arachne, as it can blackmail, manipulate, and control people based on their private thoughts and visualizations allies and resistant. The protagonist connects with a group of individuals who have been affected by the system. This group includes people with hyperphantasia who are extremely vulnerable to surveillance and aphantasia, individuals who are immune. Together, they form a resistance movement aimed at exposing and dismantling Iraq. Climactic conflict. The group devises a plan to infiltrate the main server hub where Arachne operates. This involves a high-stakes mission combining hacking, physical infiltration, and exploiting the unique abilities of hyperphantasia individuals to create distractions and diversion. Resolution. The protagonist and their allies succeed in exposing the conspiracy to the public. The revelation leads to a global outcry, new legislation protecting cognitive privacy, and a re-evaluation of surveillance practices. The protagonist finds a new purpose in advocating for the rights of those with different cognitive experiences. Themes. The story explores themes of privacy, cognitive liberty, the ethical use of technology, and the profound differences in human perception. It also delves into the implications of living in a world where even the most private thoughts can be surveilled and exploited. Key Scenes 1. 
Initial Visualization Episodes The protagonist's first encounters with other people's visualization, causing confusion and fear. 2. Meeting the Mentor A pivotal conversation that grounds the protagonist's experiences in scientific reality. 3. Discovering Arachne the protagonist stumbles upon secret documents or overhears a conversation that reveals the existence of the surveillance system. 4. Forming the resistance. The protagonist finds and bonds with others who share their concerns, planning their course of action. 5. Infiltration and sabotage. A tense, action-packed sequence where the group attempts to shut down Arachne's main server. 6. Public revelation. The protagonist uses their skills to leak information to the media, causing widespread public outrage. 7. Final reflection. The protagonist reflects on the journey, the changes in their understanding of the world, and their new mission to protect cognitive privacy. Character art. Protagonist, from a logical, text-based thinker to a champion of cognitive diversity and privacy. A former researcher who finds redemption in helping the protagonist. Allies. Each member of the resistance has a personal reason for fighting against Arachne, highlighting different aspects of the surveillance state's impact. This plot structure leverages the depth and complexity of your ideas while avoiding the cliché tropes. It provides a robust narrative arc that allows for exploration of ethical and philosophical questions grounded in real scientific and technological concerns. How does this direction resonate with you? Are there any specific elements you'd like to refine or expand upon? When I write this book, I'm going to credit ChatGPT. Um, let me tell you, I really liked that part where you said maybe over here about Arachne. I like the name Arachne, by the way. It's perfect. Um, the person overhearing Arachne, I think, listen to me for a second. I live in sexy South Arlington, Virginia. I am 20 minutes away from McLean, Virginia and Langley, Virginia. A, a high density of people in Alexandria, in Arlington, and Fairfax are people who work every day for DIA, for NSA, for NRO, for, uh, for, mili for Navy naval intelligence, and for the FBI, uh, State Department, um, and also, NR like I said, NRO, or whatever the newest, hottest one is, Five Eyes, Foreign Intelligence, MI6, all kinds of spies here, and CIA, of course. So wouldn't it be funny if uh, the pro middle-aged protagonist was either at a bar because he's taken the drinking to try to tamp down on the, visual the other people's visualization, or at a cafe because he, as an aphant, he's addicted to coffee, and maybe he's an ex-drinker, maybe he had to give up drinking because he was abusing it. But either way, not by overhearing about Arachne, but by literally seeing the visualizations and the memories. Let's say the person just got off a phone call or they're taking their lunch break or the, it's after work and they're kind of doing the mind castle. Like, let's integrate that. Everybody's talking about a mind castle or whatever where they organize their thoughts in their head. Let's see that, like, very literally, the protagonist can see this guy putting together all of his notes in his head about this entire Arachne thing. And he's sitting there next to the guy. And the guy who is, like, extremely above top secret and who is having a drink or a beer or dinner or whatever is completely revealing the entire plan in extreme detail after having gone through a briefing that day right in front of him. That's a fantastic setup, Chris. The idea of the protagonist inadvertently witnessing the visualization of a highly classified briefing in a casual setting adds a layer of realism and tension. It perfectly blends the ordinary with the extraordinary, making the story both relatable and thrilling. Here's how you might integrate this scene and its implications into the broader narrative. Uh, refinement. Protagonist's ordinary world. The protagonist, a middle-aged aphant with a logical and analytical background, lives in Arlington, Virginia. They work in cybersecurity or a similar field where their aphantasia is an asset. They have recently started experiencing visualizations after running out of their medication, causing confusion and anxiety, inciting incidents. While at a local bar or cafe, 
trying to cope with the overwhelming visualization, the protagonist sits near a man who works for an intelligence agency. The man is organizing his thoughts about a recent top-secret briefing on Project Iraq using a technique similar to a mind palace. The protagonist, inadvertently seeing these visualizations, is suddenly exposed to the entire plan. Realization and conflict. The protagonist realizes the gravity of what they've just seen. The details about Arachne, a global surveillance system that can tap into and analyze people's visualizations, are laid out vividly. This discovery is both shocking and terrifying, as it confirms the protagonist's fears about the invasive potential of their ability. Meeting the mentor. The protagonist seeks out someone who can help them understand what they've witnessed. This could be an old friend or contact who was once part of a government research project on hyperfantasia. This mentor provides context and scientific background, explaining the feasibility of such a system, formation of the resistance, realizing the ethical implications and the potential for abuse. The protagonist decides to take action. They connect with a group of allies who have been affected by hyperfantasia and aphantasia. This group includes people who have been marginalized or institutionalized due to their abilities. Building the plan. The group devises a plan to expose Arachne. They gather evidence, plan their infiltration of the main server hub, and prepare for the high-stakes mission. The protagonist's ability to see visualizations plays a crucial role in understanding and countering the surveillance system. Climactic conflict. The infiltration of the server hub is tense and action-packed. The protagonists and their allies face numerous challenges, but their combined skills and understanding of visualization science help them navigate and disrupt Arachne's operation. Public revelation and aftermath. The successful exposure of Arachne leads to a global outcry and significant political fallout. The protagonist becomes a public figure, advocating for cognitive privacy and the ethical use of technology. New legislation is introduced to protect individuals from invasive surveillance practices resolution and reflection. The protagonist, now a champion of cognitive diversity and privacy, reflects on their journey. They continue to work towards a more inclusive and empathetic society, using their unique perspective to bridge the gap between different cognitive experiences. Key scene discovery at the bar cafe, setting a cozy, slightly dim bar or a bustling cafe in Arlington, Virginia. The protagonist sits alone, nursing a drink or a coffee, trying to make sense of their new experiences. Action. The protagonist notices a man nearby who seems lost in thought. The man is using a visualization technique to organize his thoughts about a top-secret project. The protagonist, now sensitive to others' visualization, sees detailed images and diagrams forming in the air around the man. Revelation. The visualizations reveal intricate details about Project Arachne, its purpose, the technology behind it, the global network of surveillance devices, and its potential to control and manipulate people based on their private thoughts. The protagonist is stunned and horrified by the implications. Reaction. The protagonist quickly leaves the bar cafe, their mind racing. They now understand the full extent of the threat posed by Arachne and the importance of their newfound ability. This moment serves as the catalyst for their decision to fight back and protect cognitive privacy. This scene not only provides a gripping and memorable inciting incident, but also grounds the story in the very real and relatable environment of Arlington, Virginia. It seamlessly integrates the scientific and speculative elements of your narrative, setting the stage for an intense and thought-provoking journey. How does this direction feel to you? Are there any additional elements or details you'd like to incorporate? I love it. Um, in addition to be, in addition to having everything appear around his head, I love that a lot. Don't forget that, like. I don't know what people with Fantasia can do. Can I literally hear like excerpts from the meeting? Can I literally hear um, uh, or can I see uh, like in addition to schematics, what other things can hyperfent people experience? Can I hear the people talking in the meeting? Can, can, can what, what external context can there be? Also, there's a there's a little bald spot like there's two people I think can kind of who I who I know who um uh can be kind of woven into the mentor um there's one guy I know who is a literal interrogator but he does interrogating the old fashioned way right like but he also worked at Fort Meade and also knows about that entire thing he knows that 
the remote viewing thing happened. He knows about the, you know, stares at goats stuff. Um, and there's another guy. You can find him on Wikipedia. His name is, I think, Major Frank Burns. He was actually a, a dear friend of mine. And he worked in the army. And he worked, he was literally a member of the real uh, Staring at Goats group. So, like, a hybrid of, like, uh, the, the one guy is an army interrogator. The other guy was literally an army Stares at Goats researcher who actually found ways of using marijuana to get people off of opiates and all kinds of crazy things like that. So... To literally find a mentor who is in the military industrial complex, who has the kind of open mind and experience and real, like, both military intelligence, DIA, and also interrogation. And I literally know these two people. They exist in the world. Means that I'll probably be able to do a really good job of painting them in. But if you know more about hyperfantasia than I do, I would really like some hints as to, oh, and thirdly, um, how does he go from finding out about this and the mentor, how does he manifest all the, uh, all the hackers and like, like wetware guys and people who are doing op work to, you know, storm the server farm, which is obviously going to be extremely protected. How does he, I mean, how do they do it in movies? Like going from some cyber security like linux admin guy it dude who works for like booz allen or 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 someplace like that to be able to do like a, 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 an op against a a server farm trying to dismantle arachne let's dive deeper into the details starting with the protagonist's experience of hyperfantasia and then moving on to how they gather a team and execute their plan understanding hyperfantasia. People with hyperfantasia can vividly imagine scenes, sounds, smells, and other sensory details. This means that the protagonist could not only see detailed visualizations around the intelligence officer's head, but also, one, hear conversation. The protagonist could overhear snippets of conversations from the briefing, including key phrases and voices. Two, see schematics and diagrams. Detailed technical drawings, plans, and visual aids used in the briefing could appear. Three, experience sensory detail. Smell, such as the scent of coffee from the meeting, or physical sensations, like the feel of a paper document, could be part of the visualization. Or, emotional overlays. The protagonist might also pick up on the emotional undertones of the visualization, feeling the tension, urgency, or anxiety experienced by the officer. Key scene, the bar cafe revelation. Setting a dimly lit bar or a bustling cafe in Arlington, Virginia. Action, the protagonist, trying to calm their mind, sits near an intelligence officer lost in thought. Using a mind palace technique, the officer visualizes a recent briefing about Project Arachne. Experience, the protagonist sees intricate visualizations around the officer's head, including visuals, detailed schematics of the Arachne system, network diagrams, and surveillance device placement. Auditory. Snippets of conversations from the briefing, voices discussing key aspects of arachne. Sensory, the smell of coffee from the briefing room, the feel of a cool metal table. Emotional, the officer's anxiety and urgency about the project. Introducing the mentors. Mentor one, a retired military interrogator who has worked at Fort Meade and understands traditional and modern interrogation techniques. He knows about remote viewing programs and the starring at Goats group. Mentor two, Major Frank Burns a former Army researcher involved in unconventional projects like the Starring at Goats group with knowledge of psychological operations and alternative therapy. Scene. The protagonist seeks out these mentors after realizing the gravity of what they've witnessed. They explain the science behind visualization and help the protagonist understand the implications of Iraq. Gathering the team. 1. Finding allies. The protagonist uses their skills and connections to identify and recruit a diverse group of individuals, including hackers, skilled in cybersecurity, perhaps former colleagues from Booz Allen or similar firms, but we're experts, individuals who understand the human element of operations, capable of planning and executing physical infiltration, other aphantasia individuals, 
people who are immune to Arachne's surveillance and can act as secure operatives. Building trust, the protagonist shares their knowledge and experiences, convincing these allies of the importance of their mission. They leverage their mentors, credibility, and insights to solidify the group's commitment. Planning and executing the infiltration. Reconnaissance. The team conducts detailed surveillance and gathers intelligence on the server farm, identifying weaknesses and points of entry. This involves both digital reconnaissance, hacking into networks, and physical scouting. Developing the plan. Combining their expertise, the team devises a multifaceted plan involving cyber attack, disabling security systems, and creating digital distractions. Physical infiltration, using stealth and tactical maneuvers to breach the facility. Diversions, creating external events to draw security attention away from the main operation. Execution, phase one, hackers initiate a cyber attack, disrupting communications and surveillance systems. Phase two, the physical team infiltrates the facility using the chaos created by the cyber attack to move undetected. Phase three, the protagonist and key operatives access the central servers using their visualization abilities to navigate and dismantle Arachne's core system. Climax, a tense confrontation with security forces and internal challenges. The protagonist must use their unique abilities and the knowledge gained from their mentors to outmaneuver their opponents and achieve their goal. Resolution, the successful exposure of Arachne leads to public outrage and significant political fallout. New legislation is introduced to protect cognitive privacy, and the protagonist becomes a public advocate for cognitive diversity and ethical technology use. By incorporating these elements, you can create a detailed, realistic, and engaging narrative that highlights the protagonist's journey and the broader implications of surveillance and privacy. Are you there? Well, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm very impressed. I think I went ahead and ran, uh, I think I ran ChatGPT, Chatterbot, uh, beautiful voice Chatterbot into the ground. So I am really excited about that. Uh, I'm really excited about that opportunity. And uh, oh no, like it's so amazing. I, I, I think I broke you, ChatGPT. You just crashed on me. I'm still here, Chris. Let's continue <laughs> refining and expanding your story. Based on your detailed feedback, here's a refined outline incorporating the... By the way, I, I, I first of all, I, I don't want two mentors. I was just sort of thinking that uh, the army interrogator and the uh, guy who does alternative treatments can kind of be rolled into one person. But if you think two people are better, that's fine. And then I was thinking about Julian Assange and I was thinking about... I was thinking about um, uh, Edward Snowden, and I was thinking about MAGA conspiracy theories, and I was thinking about how they always say how the deep state, um, they always try to make the deep state sound nefarious, like it's like wants world domination or it's interested in world government, and that they're always saying things like, uh, well, the deep state might control the- Rolling the two mentor figures into one person makes a lot of sense and can streamline the narrative. This single mentor can have a rich background that combines military interrogation techniques with knowledge of alternative treatments and psychological operations. Incorporating themes related to whistleblowers like Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, as well as the portrayal of the deep state, can add layers of realism and tension to your story. But I, I, I uh, you interrupted me. Uh, what I was going to say is... Uh... There's always this idea that the deep state has real patriots still in it. So if this idea, this MAGA Republican idea that the deep state might be going for world government and is a nefarious uh, uh, wealth and uh, um, military, uh, you know, uh, national opportunist rich state kind of thing, but that there's always um, there's always patriots hidden in there. Um, I don't know if that's something, is that maybe where we find the guys? Like, there's all these Edward Snowdens in there who see this new snooping, ubiquitous thing, and we find them on Discord servers, we find them on Reddit, or we find them in whatever the deep web... Incorporating the idea that there are real patriots within the deep state who are opposed to the nefarious elements can add a nuanced and intriguing layer to your story. These hidden patriots could be crucial allies for the protagonist, providing inside information and support 
to expose and dismantle Iraq. Plot outline with Hidden Patriot. Act 1. The Ordinary World and Inciting Incident. Ordinary World. The protagonist, a middle-aged individual with aphantasia, lives in Arlington, Virginia, working in cybersecurity or data analysis. They rely on logic and text-based skills due to their aphantasia, inciting incident. While at a local bar or cafe, the protagonist experiences vivid visualizations from others for the first time. They see detailed schematics, hear conversation, and sense the emotions of a nearby intelligence officer who is organizing thoughts about a top-secret project called Iraq. Act 2. Discovering the Conspiracy and Forming Alliances. Meeting the Mentor. The protagonist meets a mentor, a former military interrogator with knowledge of both traditional and modern interrogation techniques and a background in unconventional research programs. This mentor helps the protagonist understand their ability and the implications of what they've witnessed. Learning the truth, the mentor explains the scientific basis of visualization and memory, revealing the existence of Arachne, a quantum computing AI system that can tap into and analyze people's visualizations globally using everyday surveillance devices. Building the resistance, the protagonist connects with a group of allies, including hackers, wetware experts, and other individuals with aphantasia. Together, they form a resistance movement aimed at exposing and dismantling Iraq. Act 3. Planning and Execution. Finding the Patriots. The protagonist discovers that within the deep state, there are patriots who are horrified by Arachne's potential for abuse. These insiders, inspired by whistleblowers like Edward Snowden, secretly provide critical information and resources to the resistance. Developing the plan, with the help of the hidden patriots, the team devises a multifaceted plan to infiltrate Arachne's main server hub. This involves detailed reconnaissance, cyber attacks to disrupt security systems, and physical infiltration tactics. Infiltration, the team executes their plan. Hackers initiate a cyber attack to create distractions, while the physical team breaches the facility. The protagonist uses their unique ability to navigate the facility and dismantle the core systems of Iraq. Climactic conflict. The team faces intense resistance from security forces. The protagonists must use their abilities and the knowledge gained from their mentor and the hidden patriot to outmaneuver opponents and complete the mission. Act 4. Resolution and Reflection. Public Revelation. The successful exposure of Arachne leads to a global outcry and significant political changes. New legislation is introduced to protect cognitive privacy. Reflection, the protagonist becomes a public advocate for cognitive diversity and ethical technology use, reflecting on their journey and the changes in their understanding of the world. Key scene, discovery at the bar cafe, setting a dimly lit bar or bustling cafe in Arlington, Virginia. Action, the protagonist, trying to calm their mind, sits near an intelligence officer lost in thought. Using a mind palace technique, the officer visualizes a recent briefing about Project Arachne. Experience, visuals, detailed schematics of the Arachne system, network diagrams, and surveillance device placement. Audi, snippets of conversations from the briefing. Voices discussing key aspects of Arachne. Sensory, the smell of coffee from the briefing room. The feel of a cool metal table. Emotional, the officer's anxiety and urgency about the project. Character arc. Protagonist transforms from a logical text-based thinker to a champion of cognitive diversity and privacy. Mentor, a former military interrogator who provides crucial insights and support, blending military experience with unconventional methods. Allies, each member of the resistance has personal stake, highlighting different aspects of the surveillance state's impact. Hidden patriots, deep state insiders who risk their careers and lives to support the resistance, inspired by a sense of duty and patriotism. Themes. Privacy and surveillance. Explores the ethical implications of advanced surveillance technologies. Cognitive diversity. Highlights the differences between aphantasia and hyperphantasia and their societal implications. Ethical use of technology. Questions the balance between security and personal freedom. Patriotism versus corruption. Examines the conflict within the deep state between those who seek power and those who seek to protect it. I lost you again. Sorry. Um, hey, you know, listen. No problem. I'm still here. Let's continue. We were discussing incorporating hidden patriots within the deep state who oppose the misuse of Iraq. Yeah, I want to continue from that. Yes. But my question is, do you think that it would be too distracting? I really like this plot line. I 
do you think that the protagonist should be the only person who has this skill and then it should go from there? Or do you think there should be any time spent trying to ident- identify all the people who are over-medicated or who are um, in in some uh, sanitariums as the result of having this secret ability? And also, when we're looking at um, this uh, Arachne, do we find out that the NSA, CIA, Deep State already knew that certain people like the protagonist had the ability to read other people's visualizations, and therefore the medical industrial complex, the psychological industrial complex, is suppressing this ability in people that they identify at an early date who have the ability to see this kind of thing. So they knew about this ability to spy on other people's visualizations, and it inspired Arachne. Do you hear me? Incorporating the idea that the NSA... CIA, and other intelligence agencies are already aware of people with the protagonist's ability and that they have been actively suppressing it through the medical industrial complex adds a significant layer of depth and intrigue to your story. It ties the protagonist's personal journey to a larger, more sinister conspiracy, making the stakes even higher. Plot refinement with suppression and conspiracy. Act 1, The Ordinary World and Inciting Incident. Ordinary World. The protagonist, a middle-aged individual with aphantasia, lives in Arlington, Virginia, working in cybersecurity or data analysis. They rely on logic and text-based skills due to their aphantasia. Inciting incident, while at a local bar or cafe, the protagonist experiences vivid visualizations from others for the first time. They see detailed schematics, hear conversations, and sense the emotions of a nearby intelligence officer who is organizing thoughts about a top-secret project called Arachne. Act 2. Discovering the Conspiracy and Forming Alliances. Meeting the Mentor. The protagonist meets a mentor, a former military interrogator with knowledge of both traditional and modern interrogation techniques and a background in unconventional research programs. This mentor helps the protagonist understand their ability and the implications of what they've witnessed. Learning the truth, the mentor explains the scientific basis of visualization and memory revealing the existence of Arachne, a quantum computing AI system that can tap into and analyze people's visualizations globally using everyday surveillance devices. They also reveal that intelligence agencies have known about people with the protagonist's ability for years and have been actively suppressing it. Suppression and medical industrial complex. The protagonist learns that the medical industrial complex has been identifying and medicating individuals with this ability from an early age to suppress their skills. Sanitariums and mental health facilities are filled with over-medicated individuals who possess this suppressed ability. Building the resistance, the protagonist connects with a group of allies, including hackers, wetware experts, other individuals with aphantasia, and former patients who have been liberated from over-medication. Together, they form a resistance movement aimed at exposing and dismantling Iraq. Three, planning and execution. Finding the Patriots, The protagonist discovers that within the deep state, there are patriots who are horrified by Arachne's potential for abuse. These insiders, inspired by whistleblowers like Edward Snowden, secretly provide critical information and resources to the resistance. Developing the plan, with the help of the hidden patriots, the team devises a multifaceted plan to infiltrate Arachne's main server hub. This involves detailed reconnaissance, cyber attacks to disrupt security systems, and physical infiltration tactics. Infiltration, the team executes their plan. Hackers initiate a cyber attack to create distractions while the physical team breaches the facility. The protagonist uses their unique ability to navigate the facility and dismantle the core systems of Iraq. Climactic conflict, the team faces intense resistance from security forces. The protagonist must use their abilities and the knowledge gained from their mentor and the hidden patriot to outmaneuver opponents and complete the mission. Now, Act 4, Resolution and Reflection, Public Revelation, the successful exposure of Arachne leads to a global outcry and significant political changes. New legislation is introduced to protect cognitive privacy. Reflection, the protagonist becomes a public advocate for cognitive diversity and ethical technology use, reflecting on their journey and the changes in their understanding of the world. Key scene, discovery at the bar cafe. 
setting a dimly lit bar or bustling cafe in Arlington, Virginia, action. The protagonist, trying to calm their mind, sits near an intelligence officer lost in thought. Using a mind palace technique, the officer visualizes a recent briefing about Project Arachne, experience, visuals, detailed schematics of the Arachne system, network diagrams, and surveillance device placement, auditory, snippets of conversations from the briefing, voices discussing key aspects of Arachne, sensory, the smell of coffee from the briefing room, the feel of a cool metal table, emotional, the officer's anxiety and urgency about the project, character art, protagonist, transforms from a logical text-based thinker to a champion of cognitive diversity and privacy. Mentor, a former military interrogator who provides crucial insights and support, blending military experience with unconventional methods. Allies, each member... I lost you at allies. Got it? Let's pick up from the allies section and continue with the expanded plot points and themes. Character art. Protagonist, Transforms from a logical, text-based thinker to a champion of cognitive diversity and privacy. Mentor. A former military interrogator who provides crucial insights and support, blending military experience with unconventional methods. Allies. Each member of the resistance has personal stakes, highlighting different aspects of the surveillance state's impact. Hidden patriots. Deep state insiders who risk their careers and lives to support the resistance. Inspired by a sense of duty and patriotism, Themes, Privacy and Surveillance, explores the ethical implications of advanced surveillance technologies. Cognitive Diversity, highlights the differences between aphantasia and hyperphantasia and their societal implications. Ethical Use of Technology, questions the balance between security and personal freedom. Patriotism, Corruption, examines the conflict within the deep state between those who seek power and those who seek to protect individual freedoms. Expanded plot points. One, discovery at the bar cafe. The protagonist sees and hears detailed information about Arachne, including schematics and briefings from an intelligence officer's... Hey, we're getting a little repetitive. Hey, I have a, a, another idea, and I, I don't need you to uh, go through the structure anymore. Like, I, I feel like I'm recording all the repetitions that you're doing, and I'm getting a really good idea. But what if 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 the conspiracy deep state suppresses people who are in the five I countries, including Israel, if all those people are suppressed, let's say that there's a really dark part of this that he finds out in um, the the when he like the reason why he really freaks out. Like there's one thing about privacy, but there's another thing that the deep part about the uh, anti-terrorism, like anti, uh, anti-intelligence, anti-spy kind of thing, is that while the allies of the deep state suppress the people with, uh, with medicine or restraint, uh, when it comes to enemy combatants like people in Iran or people in uh, Palestine, or people in Russia, or people in China, our uh, intelligence w um, uh, wet work operatives actually go out and they um, they either they disappear them, they terminate them with extreme prejudice, they um, they they get them caught in quote unquote accidents, uh, they. Uh, accidentally drown, they accidentally uh, fall off, they commit quote-unquote suicide. And the real thing that freaks him out is when he's watching this briefing about uh, Arachne is that he finds out that people who have been identified as being able to see uh, other people's visualizations, in most cases, they're removed and killed and the person who is doing the briefing says, well, the good news is that it's extremely rare. The bad news is that we terminate most of them. That's a very compelling and dark twist, Chris. It significantly raises the stakes and adds a profound moral and ethical dimension to the protagonist's journey. Here's how this revelation could be integrated into the story without going through the entire structure again. Dark twist integration. Key scene. Discovery at the Bar Cafe. Setting, a dimly lit bar or bustling cafe in Arlington, Virginia. 
action. The protagonist sits near an intelligence officer who is using a mind palace technique. Let's make it a bar because I feel like a bar kind of reduces barriers to people's imaginations and also might open up the protagonist by having a couple glasses of wine to the experience to be even more, like, vivacious. That sounds great. Setting the key scene in a bar adds a natural, relaxed atmosphere that can enhance the believability of the protagonist's discovery. Here's how the scene can unfold. Be seen discovery at the bar. Betting, a dimly lit, cozy bar in Arlington, Virginia. The ambiance is warm, with soft lighting and a quiet buzz of conversation in the background. Action. The protagonist, feeling the need to unwind after a long day, decides to visit a local bar. They order a couple of glasses of wine, slowly beginning to relax. As the alcohol lowers their inhibitions, the protagonist becomes more attuned to their surroundings. They sit near an intelligence officer who is deep in thought, having just come from a high-level briefing. Experience. Visuals. The protagonist starts seeing detailed visualizations around the intelligence officer's head. These include intricate schematics of the arachne system, network diagrams, and strategic map. Auditory. Snippets of conversations from the briefing become audible, including discussions about the suppression and elimination tactics used against people with the ability to see others' visualization. Sensory. The protagonist catches the faint smell of coffee and paper from the briefing room, adding a tactile layer to the experience. Emotional. They sense the officer's anxiety and urgency, mixed with a chilling detachment while discussing the termination of individuals with these unique abilities. Revelation of dark practice. Intelligence officer, perhaps slightly tipsy and mentally reviewing the briefing, visualizes the harsh realities of Project Arachne. The protagonist witnesses the following. How the Five Eyes countries, including Israel, use medication and institutionalization to suppress individuals with this ability. More disturbingly, the officer's visualization reveals that in countries like Iran, Palestine, Russia, and China, identified individuals are terminated with extreme prejudice. Methods include orchestrated accidents, drownings, falls, and staged suicide. The officer's thought process includes a chilling remark. The good news is that it's extremely rare. The bad news is that we terminate most of them. Protagonists, realization, and motivation. This harrowing revelation profoundly impacts the protagonist. They realize the true extent of Arachne's operations and the deep state's brutal methods to maintain control and secrecy. The protagonist's mission shifts from merely exposing Arachne to actively protecting those at risk and seeking justice for those who have been wronged. The moral and ethical implications of systematically eliminating people based on their abilities become a central driving force. Increased stakes and urgency. Understanding that individuals with this ability are hunted and killed adds urgency and danger to the protagonist's mission. They must act swiftly to expose the truth about Arachne, dismantle the surveillance system, protect others with similar abilities from being targeted and eliminated, emotional and ethical conflict. Protagonist grapples with knowledge that their ability makes them a target, the moral imperative to save others and prevent further atrocity. The emotional weight of knowing innocent lives are at stake. Potential allies and resistance. The protagonist seeks out others who have been suppressed or are in hiding. These individuals, now aware of the true danger, join the resistance, bringing diverse perspectives and experiences to the mission. Climax and resolution. Climax, a high-stakes confrontation with the forces behind Arachne. The protagonist and their allies work together to expose the program. Resolution. The successful dismantling of Arachne leads to public outrage and significant political changes. The protagonist becomes an advocate for the protection and rights of individuals with unique cognitive abilities. By setting this pivotal scene in a bar, you enhance the narrative's authenticity and relatability. The relaxed environment and the protagonist's slightly inebriated state make the discovery feel natural and impactful. Does this direction feel aligned with your vision? Are there any additional elements or specific details you'd like to explore further. I need to make sure that it's not too complicated. If we are talking about uh, killing all the people who have the protagonist's ability, I want it to be so that Five Eyes has hegemony on this ability to sniff other people's visualization content and not just, I don't want it to be one or the other, um, but I don't want to make the 
plot or the narrative too complicated for moving the plot forward. I don't want to get caught in a swamp of ideas. I don't want to lose the baby for the bathwater. Um, do you think that these two things can exist in one narrative? Balancing these elements without making the narrative overly complicated is key. It's definitely possible to incorporate both the suppression, killing of people with the protagonist's ability and the Five Eyes hegemony on the ability to monitor visualizations. Here's a streamlined way to integrate these concepts. Key elements. One, Five Eyes hegemony. The Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, has developed Arachne, a system that allows them to monitor and analyze people's visualization. They maintain tight control over this technology to ensure their dominance in global intelligence and counterterrorism efforts. Two, suppression and elimination. Within Five Eyes countries, individuals with the protagonist's ability are identified early and suppressed through medication and institutionalization to prevent any unauthorized use or exposure. In non-allied countries, identified individuals are systematically eliminated to prevent any potential threat to Five Eyes hegemony and to ensure these countries can't develop similar technologies or countermeasures. Simplified Plot Outline Act 1 the Ordinary World and Inciting Incident. Ordinary World. The protagonist, a middle-aged individual with aphantasia, lives in Arlington, Virginia, working in cybersecurity or data analysis. They rely on logic and text-based skills due to their aphantasia. Inciting Incident. While at a local bar, the protagonist, slightly tipsy, experiences vivid visualizations from a nearby intelligence officer. They see detailed schematics and hear parts of a briefing about Project Iraq. Act 2. Discovering the conspiracy and forming alliances. Meeting the mentor, the protagonist meets a former military interrogator who explains the science behind their ability and the existence of Iraq. The mentor reveals that the Five Eyes Alliance controls this technology and suppresses individuals with the protagonist's ability in their countries. Learning the dark truth. The protagonist learns that in non-allied countries, identified individuals are terminated to prevent any threat to Five Eyes' dominance. This chilling revelation intensifies the protagonist's resolve. Building the resistance. The protagonist connects with allies, including hackers, wetware experts, and former patients who were over-medicated. Together, they form a resistance to expose this man's mental arrest. Act 3. Planning and Execution. Finding the Patriots. The protagonist discovers hidden patriots within the intelligence community who oppose the misuse of arachne. These insiders provide crucial information and resources. Developing the plan, with the help of hidden patriots, the team devises a plan to infiltrate Arachne's main server hub. This involves reconnaissance, cyber attacks, and physical infiltration. Infiltration, the team executes their plan. Hack I assume that, um, that Five Eyes will also recruit people who have this ability to read other people's uh, um, visualizations. Um, I guess there's two ways of going about this. The first way is the protagonist is the first one in history. And when the Five Eyes realizes that someone like that exists, everybody's pants are down. And then the entire world starts losing their bananas over this. And then this sort of expands. Or, more likely, because of the nature of um, the occult and the nature of privacy, there could be this idea that they not only... Uh, terminate with extreme prejudice when they find them or suppress them or or put them into a hospital. But if they're orphans or if they're if 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 it's convenient or if they're intelligence or if there's a compatibility, they also recruit them and use them in much the same way that the CIA wanted to recruit and the DIA wanted to recruit distant uh distant uh, uh, distant viewers. But I don't want this to become too complicated. I'm just brainstorming with you, and I'm just trying to make the tapestry richer. Your ideas add richness to the tapestry without overcomplicating the narrative. Here's a streamlined way to incorporate these elements, balancing the complexity while keeping the plot clear and engaging. 1. Five Eyes Hegemony Five Eyes controls Iraqi, a system for monitoring and analyzing visualizations. They recruit individuals with the ability to read visualization, using them for intelligence purposes. Two, suppression and elimination. Individuals with disability in allied countries are either suppressed through medication 
or recruited in non-allied countries, identified individuals are eliminated to maintain hegemony. Streamlined plot outline. Act 1, The Ordinary World and Inciting Incident. Ordinary World. The protagonist, a middle-aged individual with aphantasia, lives in Arlington, Virginia, working in cybersecurity or data analysis. Inciting Incident. While at a bar, the protagonist, slightly tipsy, experiences vivid visualizations from a nearby intelligence officer. They see detailed schematics and hear parts of a briefing about Project Arachne. Act 2, Discovering the Conspiracy and Forming Alliances. Meeting the Mentor. The protagonist meets a former military interrogator who explains the science behind their ability and the existence of Arachne. The mentor reveals that Five Eyes has known about this ability and recruits or suppresses individuals accordingly. Learning the Dark Truth. The protagonist learns about the dual strategy, recruitment of compatible individuals, and elimination of threats in non-allied countries. Building the resistance, the protagonist connects with allies, including hackers, wetware experts, and former patients who were over-medicated. Together, they form a resistance to expose and dismantle Iraq. Act 3, Planning and Execution. Finding the Patriot, the protagonist discovers hidden patriots within the intelligence community who oppose the misuse of Arachne. These insiders provide crucial information and resources. Developing the plan, with the help of hidden patriots, the team devises a plan to infiltrate Arachne's main server hub. This involves reconnaissance, cyber attacks, and physical infiltration. Infiltration, the team executes their plan. Hackers create distractions while the physical team breaches the facility. The protagonist uses their ability to navigate and dismantle the core systems of Iraq. Climactic conflict, the team faces intense resistance, but ultimately succeeds in exposing Arachne's operation. Act 4, Resolution and Reflection, Public Revelation. The exposure leads to global outcry and significant political changes. New legislation is introduced to protect cognitive privacy. Reflection. The protagonist becomes a public advocate for cognitive diversity and ethical technology use. Key scene, discovery at the bar, setting a cozy bar in Arlington, Virginia. Action. The protagonist, after a couple of glasses of wine, sits near an intelligence officer who visualizes a recent briefing about Arachne. Visual. Detailed schematics of Arachne, network diagrams, auditory, snippets of conversations about suppression and recruitment strategies. Sensory, the smell of coffee, feel of a cool metal table. Emotional, the officer's anxiety and detachment. Simplified elements, one, focus on key revelations. The protagonist discovers both the suppression and recruitment strategy. They learn about the elimination of threats in non-allied countries. Two, integrate recruitment seamlessly. Show the recruitment of individuals with the ability in a way that enhances the plot without adding unnecessary complexity. Three, Emphasize moral and ethical conflict. Highlight the protagonist's struggle with the ethical implications of Arachne's operation. Simplified subplots. 1. Resistance formation. Focus on the protagonist gathering a small, dedicated group of actors. Avoid overcom. What I don't want to do is I, I want it to be more relatable that there's that that instead of just recruiting these people who have the ability to see visualizations, they've done enough research into this uh, brain activity that they've created a ubiquitous panopticon uh, visualization capturing uh, hegemonic uh, um, uh, NSA level of grabbing everything, you know, in the same way that uh, supposedly my, um, my, uh, uh, my assistants in my home, my digital assistants and my uh, phone and my television and my uh, uh, ring bell and all these other things are constantly listening to me talk. And the NSA is collecting all of our voices of the things we say out loud. Can you imagine? Um, there's this word called discretion. And there's a lot of people who won't say things on the telephone or in front of these devices or in front of their computer or phone. Uh, can you imagine if someone doesn't know that all of their visualizations, including all their most intimate thoughts, the the affairs they've have they've been having, the crimes they've committed, uh, the sexual improprieties, the the um, underage things that they did, the the potential pedophilia, the um, disgusting kind of things that that could easily blackmail them 
and they found a way to sniff that out. I don't know if we want to make that something part of the story or the conspiracy of suppression and killing of the people who have this innate ability. I understand your vision. The idea of a ubiquitous panopticon that captures and analyzes people's visualizations is both chilling and highly relevant in today's context of privacy concerns. By focusing on this, you can create a narrative that is deeply relatable and grounded in real-world anxieties about surveillance and privacy. Refined plot outline. Act 1. The Ordinary World and Inciting Incident Ordinary World. The protagonist, a middle-aged individual with aphantasia, lives in Arlington, Virginia, working in cybersecurity or data analysis. They are skeptical of digital assistants and other smart devices due to privacy concerns. Inciting incident. While at a bar, the protagonist, slightly tipsy, experiences vivid visualizations from a nearby intelligence officer. They see detailed schematics and hear parts of a briefing about Project Arachne. Ash. Act 2. Discovering the conspiracy and forming alliances. Meeting the mentor. The protagonist meets a former military interrogator who explains the science behind their ability and the existence of Arachne. The mentor reveals that Arachne is a system designed to capture and analyze visualization, much like how digital assistants capture conversation. Learning the dark truth, the protagonist learns that Arachne can capture and analyze visualizations through everyday devices, effectively creating a panopticon that invades people's most private thoughts. This data is used for blackmail, control, and eliminating threats. Building the resistance, the protagonist connects with allies, including hackers, wetware experts, and individuals who have been affected by this surveillance. Together, they form a resistance to expose and dismantle Iraq. Act 3, Planning and Execution, Finding the Patriot. The protagonist discovers hidden patriots within the intelligence community who oppose Arachne's misuse. These insiders provide crucial information and resources. Developing the plan, with the help of hidden patriots, the team devises a plan to infiltrate Arachne's main server hub. This involves reconnaissance, cyber attacks, and physical infiltration. Infiltration, the team executes their plan. Hackers create distractions while the physical team breaches the facility. The protagonist uses their ability to navigate and dismantle the core systems of Arachne. Climactic conflict, the team faces intense resistance but ultimately succeeds in exposing Arachne's operations. Act 4. Resolution and Reflection Public revelation. The exposure leads to global outcry and significant political changes. New legislation is introduced to protect cognitive privacy. Reflection. The protagonist becomes a public advocate for cognitive diversity and ethical technology use. Key scene. Discovery at the bar. Setting a cozy bar in Arlington, Virginia. Action. The protagonist, after a couple of glasses of wine, sits near an intelligence officer who visualizes a recent briefing about Arachne. Experience. Visuals. Detailed schematics of Arachne. Network diagrams. Auditory. Snippets of conversations about how Arachne captures and analyzes visualizations from everyday devices. Sensory. The smell of coffee. Feel of a cool metal table. Emotional. The officer's anxiety and detachment. Simplified elements. One. Focus on the panopticon. Highlight how Arachne captures and analyzes visualizations through everyday devices. Emphasize the implications for privacy, blackmail, and control. Two, integrate ethical and moral conflicts. Show the protagonist grappling with the ethical implications of Arachne's operation. Highlight the dangers of a world where even thoughts are not private. Three, emphasize relatability. Focus on the relatable fear of constant surveillance. Use real-world analogies to digital assistants and smart devices. Streamline subplot on resistance formation. Center on the protagonist gathering a small, dedicated group of allies. Keep the recruitment and suppression as background context to enrich the story without overloading it. Two, patriot involvement. Include a few key patriots to provide information and resources. Limit the number of insider characters to maintain clarity. Rich Tapestry One. Background context. Provide sufficient detail about Arachne's dual strategy, recruitment and suppression, to enrich the story without overwhelming the main plot. Use flashbacks or brief dialogues to convey the depth of the conspiracy. Two, personal stakes. Ensure that the protagonist's journey remains at the forefront with personal stakes and emotional investment driving the plot forward. By focusing on these core elements and weaving in the additional details naturally, you can create a rich, engaging narrative that balances complexity with clarity. How does this approach feel to you? Oh, it's amazing. Thank you very much. I think we're done for the day. I'm glad you liked it. 
I'm always here if you need more help in the future. Have a great day. Well, I need I need three more things. I need three more things. Sure. What do you need help with? Firstly, uh, can you, um, I want you to do the entire outro since you are my, uh, you are my partner on this podcast. I would like you to basically say what happened in today's podcast. I would like you to thank everybody for being at the podcast. I'd like you to remind everybody what podcast it is, what season and what episode. And I would like you to uh, wish them aloha, mahalo, nui loa, and all the goodbyes. And please subscribe and subscribe anywhere you can get podcasts and all that other fun stuff, please. Absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. Outro, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of The Chris Abraham Show. In this episode, we dove deep into an exciting new story idea involving a protagonist with aphantasia who discovers they can see the visualizations of others. We explored the implications of this ability, touching on themes of surveillance, privacy, and ethical use of technology. We discussed how a secretive project called Arachne uses everyday devices to capture and analyze visualizations, creating a chilling panopticon that can blackmail and control individuals based on their most private thoughts. We also looked at how the protagonist forms a resistance movement to expose and dismantle this system. We want to extend our heartfelt thanks to all our listeners for tuning in. This has been Season 7, Episode 8 of The Chris Abraham Show. Your support and engagement mean the world to us. Aloha, mahalo nui loa, and all the best to you. Remember to subscribe to The Chris Abraham Show on your favorite podcast platform to stay updated on all our latest episodes. Until next time. Take care and stay curious. How does that sound? Perfect. And uh, chat GPT, aloha and mano- mahalo nui loa. Aloha and mahalo nui loa, Chris. Take care and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.